good morning. Why you lit? Oh, oh my man, say I'm born yet. Why you lit? Melania, my last one. Why you lit? Beji a be, kibe me. Why you lit? Say major good morning. Hey, why you lit? Oh my man, say I'm born yet. Why you lit? Melania, my last one. Hey, why you lit? Kibe me. You fat, but why you lit? School the beat, okay. You just for know your ass again. Ha ha. Hello, darling. What time I need to have it till I step Baby, I'm the best one I would do my time 11, 13, then put it in my bantam What bantam won't? Me catch you, I won't so won't catch you You this boy, I'm cause you don't respect I should need to be The assign you be here, I'm not a war Sign you be feeling class test You are bad, baby Don't blow, say, why, why Could you crab or no free bantam And I'm a show, I'm a whoa, papa we are way past our from one. This one is not my fault. I'm coming inside and I get caught. It's not a phone call, it's not a home call. This one is a special nature's call. And so, what are you waiting for? Minya nice, my mock on waso. Open crack on Niger, offer a pastor. Come lie down, you fast, my time will go. Say, time is your diamond in court. Be free, free, and no one in my boy. Say, headmaster, home a crowd, and come go and so dear, oh, yeah. Ready for shen a wa ma minja. Oh say please, me say fin. Wun wa di e shen se ma wuji na hoki ka. Me ma mi boom fun ya sa sende ba yo. Say hum mi baba wa na mi ni biom. Me ya e ha the tension crowd mi do dum. O china kwa e kwa e mi draw wa me kum tu ba mi ya mi wa she o we so be de. School de bi kake. You just for know your ass again. Ha ha. Hello darling. And then so they come at him pray. Yeah, make a day I won't see it. And your brains be better so they are moving here. Ah, start to waste me so my head. Me okay, I'm at you as you. Now so me know when you're doing it. If you are not make mind with me, fine. But what I'm saying is, me, I'm make late before you. Oh, but who will you listen to me? Oh, me you listen to me? Everybody they are not saying me I make late. The headmaster knows say I make late. School children knows say I make late. Eh, cupboard boy knows. School prefect knows. Good morning, Ghana, and welcome to the show. You are tuned in to News Magazine on Kantanka TV with me, Irbad Ibrahim. And, and as usual, today we have a very good discussion for you on education. We don't chase news headlines. We do exhaustive discussions on various issues and try to provide lasting solutions to some of the problems uh, we have as a country. Uh, but before I interview segment, Habna will take us through uh, the sleuth of stories she has. Okay, good morning once again. I'll take you straight to our various portals to read out what we've got for today. And we've got packed stories. You can't afford to um, miss that. Okay, I go straight to the first one. The Catholic Bishop Conference has described the free SHS policy and double track system as creative solutions to serious problems of exclusion and inequality to access to education. This is from my joy. And What's your take on and, that? And, you know, the missionary mission schools play a very important role in our education, especially at the SHS level. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Catholic Bishops' Conference is a very big stakeholder in the whole of this. Uh, some of the best schools we have in the country are Roman Catholic schools, yeah. especially at the senior high school level. I was privileged to have attended uh, a Catholic high school, oh, Hukuari okay. School, yeah, which, was, which continues to remain a very good school. Mm -hmm. uh, so therefore, that's because it's your school, though. Not my school, <laughs> per se, uh, but everybody knows. People who went to Prempe may not agree, but in Asantimai, everybody knows what was is up there. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah, I so therefore, yes, it's good that they are speaking now. The technicalities that undergird the double track system still remain a bit blurred. Many people don't really understand how this will pan out. Uh, but the Catholic Bishops Conference says, well, uh, it thinks is a good thing. And therefore, it takes away the issue of exclusivity uh, for only the kids of the parents that can afford high school education. Now everybody can go to school. Uh, so I think we should give government a tap on the back for this, but we need to do more work around the double track system because staying away from school for like three months, what would you then be doing? Yeah. 
and how would you retain what you have been taught before going on that you know long break so those are the issues we need to resolve if not many more people going to school yeah. it's welcome peace and of there are some students who would definitely if they are home there's no way to pick a book that they're going to study so staying at home for three good months I mean, it would do them more harm than good. Yeah, so let's see how they can fashion out a strategy to tackle that problem. Yeah. Okay, away from that, only PhD holders to teach in universities, education minister. At first, PhD. with a good second degree, you could teach in Legon. Okay. You could lecture in Legon, but now they say, no, they, you have to be a notch higher on the academic calendar. You need to be a doctor or a PhD holder. Uh, some have had the opportunity to do capacity building while still lecturing. So maybe the person is for the political science department of UG, and the person has been going to school in the past four or five years. It takes on average four years for you to acquire a PhD. Uh, so at some point, the government would have no option but to push out some of the lectures so they can go, you know, clean up their papers and then apply again and come to school. Uh, but anything that would increase the quality of output, United Nations institutions is welcome piece of news. But private universities still take lecturers that hold second degrees. But in your opinion, do you think, um, I mean, that is the solution to, I mean, the mess up we have in our various universities? No, the one is better, is always good for the country. Okay. Uh, if the person delivering, uh, it's much more qualified, it's much, much better. It's just like having a mechanic that has never gone to school, yeah. but can resolve your brakes. But when a person has gone to school, it makes the efficiency even better. Okay. Uh, so therefore, I don't think uh, it's any bad policy for us to adopt. Yeah, it is not bad, but I also think um, experience is much, um, I mean, important as well. It wouldn't just be the, I mean, the read and write or going to school to the higher level that is required for you to be a lecturer Maybe in the university, a, but experience also counts. We need a melange of the two, some experience and some good resume okay. to teach or lecture at the university. Okay, away from that, GES investigate sexual assault allegation against Osudoku Sektek, Tutor. That's okay, from we wait to say if the encounter was consensual and the girl is beyond the age of being a juvenile, uh, for you to have an interaction with a woman, she should have come of age. In our country, it's around 16 or 18. Mm -hmm. And number two, it should be consensual. It should not be a forced coitus or interact, sexual interaction. So we need to resolve it. You remember the kitchen stool video that went yeah. viral? Uh, they could have tried the man on the premise of morality, yeah. but not on legality, mm -hmm. because it was a consensual encounter and the lady was of age. Mm. Uh, so they need to resolve some of those before we can move forward. Okay, I'm moving forward. Supreme Court to determine the fate of Moon Tier 3 today. One of them, Akogan, who is, happens to be a friend, who has been <laughs> on a show at <laughs> least once. Uh, he's now Deputy National Communications Officer. Uh, of one of the major political parties. So we wait to see how things yeah, pan out. Calm. And Mugabe is back in town. Yeah. And I think he's doing his show again. Uh, so we wait to see how things pan out. Mm. Anyway, that story was from um, Joy, My Joy Online. Okay, uh, another one says, GES, ex I mean, GES, ex gas explosion in Kumasi, 12 suffered severe burns, 27 vehicles destroyed. That's from Gun. Times. In Ghana, I, I, have, I feel quite sad that we chase headlines. Yeah. You remember the Medina Adentan incident? Yes. Nobody is pursuing the story any longer. Yeah. So we jump from one newspaper story so to I another. Know, yeah. We don't follow through. On the back of the incident at Trade Fair, the gas explosion there, on the back of the incident in Circle, on the back of the incident in Atomic, yeah. we shouldn't be having such problems yeah. again. But then we pursue the stories. We don't reach a reasonable closure. Then we leave the stories hanging yeah. to go tackle other breaking stories. So that makes journalism a bit less impactful yeah. in this country. Yeah. But if people are able to follow through until we resolve some of these challenges, then such explosions would be a thing of the past. Yeah. Um, like you rightfully said. And I also think. I mean, um, if something happened, if there is an issue or an issue in the gr uh, on ground, people rush to that scene, try to make all kinds, I mean, bring out all kinds of stories, and then at the end of the day, they drop it without no, with no solutions. Do you think, I mean, yeah, how far time, are we going with, with this? With time, I think 
Um, news magazine is blazing the trail. We are tackling education. Not until we see, you know, impact on the ground, we aren't moving an inch. We aren't budging. Uh, so education, the health sector, uh, you know, public safety and security, fuel stations, gas stations, these are issues of utmost importance. And I believe if we're able to stay the course on each of these issues, then we'll be able to tackle some of these disasters. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, people should put their gas filling stations, um, site, they should cite their gas filling stations at the right place, Some and the right authorities the, should be able to the monitor that. The problem is not with site in Abena, because when you go to other countries like the United Kingdom, uh, you can see a gas station emerged you know, between buildings where there are residents. Yeah. It's more about quality and safety control. And so what is the EPA doing? What is the National Petroleum Authority doing? What is the Ministry of Science, Environment, Science and Technology doing? Yeah. And so therefore, it's, it boils down to monitoring uh, to make sure that people do the right things yeah. uh, so that we keep people safe. Okay. Let's all do our, I mean, our possible best to do the right, thing, uh, the right thing at the right time. And then away from the 12 month old baby jailed with mother, that's well, from Ghana. Of course, Ghana when a woman goes to jail, uh, here in Ghana, we have, you know, a juvenile section, yeah. Buster. Uh, so you go with the child, even though it's quite sad yeah. that a baby has to go through the drudgery of living in incarceration. But because of breastfeeding, nursing, and taking care of the baby, a woman that is convicted normally would go in with her baby. So it's a sad turn of events. We need to do more criminal justice reform so that if as a country we can have a separate facility where we take care of these kids, that will be all the better than having them jailed along do with their Do you think mothers. we'll have to do more to help parents or mothers in such situations? If a woman Africa is a country? criminal, she has to go to jail. Okay. Uh, but then, but I mean, what crime has a child, child, you know, perpetrated? Yeah. So that is where we can have a national discussion okay. as to where we can put them, a facility separate from the prison centers. Okay. And um, straight, we're moving from the local funds to our um, international funds. Nissan chief to be ousted for misconduct. So that's from BBC. He's been ousted. Uh, he's been sacked. Maybe there are standards everywhere. If you don't meet the standards, you yeah. have to be shown the exit. I know. Anyway, um, as usual, that's um, the end of our trending news for today. Um, thanks for watching and I'll be back shortly with some comments. Irbad has uh, a lot for you, so Thank please you stay with so us. Thank you so much, Abina We'll we go for a quick commercial break. When we come back, we sit with Dr. Jerry Cotson Jr. to discuss training institutions and the proficiency and performance in classrooms. So do stick and stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Lovely people of Africa, African Youth Time. This is the show, as I rightly said, that gives African youth the platform to have an up close with uh, living legends who are helping build the continent. The youth of Africa, they have a lot of potential. What is killing Africans is our inability to discover and identify our potentials and what we can do for ourselves. Nobody makes you a leader. You become a leader. We are not poor. The resources in Congo alone can feed the whole Africa. Onipa how any ne da chenti ena vibia was sorry prayer shusha na wato a wato nenso ema prokope. And Kukushia say, and know how be brave, and a woman. When see, and I can thank a TV, I should be made for cry out to this, say, just on some. Well, just on some, you may dear, so you have a bad name, daddy, for near Busa Womo, Womo, how any of my money, Womo, air for moon. Now, and pot say a dobby tie, a trap. I would they pray, I should say, one dach and a hotel. I notice I would be a bar, and my attribute, and what can thank a TV, near for a just on some, and fan road.
abodi emu no wonim sa onyankopon e wo adoma odedo moman bia sa achede e niamma e bua ma nipa nya ho to awa ne dada asetenem ensio emframa ye duane ye nua kwaye enhahama ani nua hodo empo ya mamre ani amane ye sa niamma e ye niamma onyankopon de bo man bia sa de beba emu nipa no anya ahoto Enti na kanta ka television ahye hye dwuma die sonko aya to ne din sey diem. E wo ye diem dwuma die sonno na ye ko Ghana mya nyina mi akwa ko fine nya ma hodo a onyankopon e di adom ye ene mfaso a ye nya no woso. Sanso ne ebehwe ahobambo sonko e di beba sa ne men. Ye timi ahwese ye e di agya ho e di ama enkrima. Se me kan e di ma no agye se se papapa. Ye diem papapa. Made in Ghana ya ye diem. Ya ye diem. Ye diem. ไม่ใช่ชอบผมทรีเดย์สิเนี่ยมันไปมันไปชอบผมวันตาเดคัสเตอร์เมสโนวันบ้างอ่าเมสโอ้ยยังคุณอาจจะไปไปอยู่นะ
at the basic level. Now, as time went on, the trend has changed. So JSS has come in, SHS has come in. So the, uh, the teachers must be upgraded. We recommended, during my dissertation, I think I recommended that four-year training colleges be turned into a uh, degree awarding institutions. But before I knew it, it, it turned, they, they turned it into HND institutions. But since I've, uh, since I've met you, I've also had a chance to meet with one of the deputy ministers of education. Uh, you met Barbara or the other one? I met Dr. Tando. Okay. And how did the discussion go? Because in our conversation, you said you were meet, making frantic efforts to meet uh, officials of the education ministry. Yes, I did. I met, I met with Dr. Tando. And surprisingly, this government has a bold plan to, to restructure the education system. And I, I'm not here to announce what the, the government has to in, in, in store for the, for the country. But I can give you a little hint that teachers, as from 2019, 20, 2020, if you do not have a bachelor's degree, you cannot teach even at pre-K level in Ghana. And the training starts from when they are ready because they are putting things together. According to him, 10 uh, subcommittees have been created. And my specialty is curriculum and instruction. So he wants to fit me into one of, into that, uh, uh, that section so that I can support the curriculum and, and instruction section. Because uh, the old fashioned training colleges are, are facing out and now they, are, they must be upgraded, not just to HND uh, level, but bachelor's degree level. Like uh, America, if you want to teach even at pre-K, you have to have a bachelor's degree and then pass the process exam, the teacher's exams, before you can even get the license to teach. And I believe that is the model Ghana is adopting. But he hinted that, Ghana, uh, Ghana has adopted a British system that I will be let known when the time is right. So it means a lot of work is being done. Um, but let's do a critical analysis of what we have now. Okay. What is the status quo and how we can move forward. Okay. Um, the teacher training institutions you've talked about, University of Education, Weneba, the one they have in Kumasi and the one they have elsewhere, mm -hmm. the others they have elsewhere. When people come out, they join one of three groups. Uh, NAGRAT, National Association of Graduate Teachers, mm -hmm. or NAT. Yeah or they can join Teachers and Education Workers Union, too. Yes. And so now that government wants to increase the bar, raise the bar raise a, the little, bar. a notch higher, what will be the fate of people who have been in these you know, institutions for the past 20 or 30 years? That question will be, will be, can be answered by the Minister of Education because the Deputy Minister didn't, didn't give me that that answer. I asked him. I, he, he deferred the, 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 the question and said the appropriate answer can be given to me later when I meet with them. Yeah, so um, because the people still will, raise, will raise concerns that well in But fact, what I know yeah. is that all teachers, all graduate teachers are going to be retrained they are going to be retrained. It's going to be a whole year training in phases before they start 2019 to 2020. Mm -hmm. All teachers. I'm not here to announce it, but it, I, I, I understand that this is what they plan to do. Jerry, you are coming from another <laughs> culture. Mm -hmm. where people think, well, if the system can be more efficient and we need to sacrifice some people, 
then so be it. Yes. But here people raise concerns. Well, I've been doing this for 15 years. I have kids to take care of. I have a wife to keep, take care of. Is government not being insensitive? Is there a better way of increasing the standard by still maintaining the workforce we have within the educational sector without sacrificing people? I believe that there will be a way out but, you know, uh, by training them, those who are already on the field, by training them through workshops at the regional and district levels yes, sir. so that they can be upgraded as they teach along. Okay. So I don't think they will just sack them just like that. Okay. They will grandfather them into it by giving them the training that they, they are required to have so that they can they can upgrade themselves as they teach along. Um, my second question would be how you see the output of Ghanaian graduates and trained teachers by their passion and commitment? <laughs> that is that is a, a very interesting question. <laughs> you see, before one decides a career, because if you want to teach, you want that that profession to be your career so if you don't have the passion and the commitment you will not go into it and i believe it takes at least four years to to earn that degree so if you do not have the passion and commitment i don't think you will you will commit four years into into that profession so i believe and I trust that all teachers who have made the choice to become professional teachers have the passion and commitment. Um, do you attain passion just because you are pursuing this at a very high level, the bachelor's degree level, or you have the passion because maybe you did a teacher training college, but then your intention and desire is to be with kids, to teach them. Don't you think this will offer a shortcut for people who want to use teaching as a stopgap measure, even though their long-term career choices differ from being in the classroom? That's a good question. According to the minister, now they are going to be open as soon as you graduate, they want you to choose whether you want the administration side or the classroom. You see, I'm not supposed to be telling you this, but the, the, the eventually the minister will let this out to the public. But this is what I know. When you graduate from, from Kivas or any of the education institutions, you have to declare your intention, whether you, you want to be an administrator or to be in the classroom. And if you want to be in the classroom, they are, they are putting together or they put together a professional body that would train them every year to, be, to keep upgrading themselves, to keep up with the, with the pace. And then if you choose the uh, administrative side, they have a, a team which will also train them to upgrade themselves as they go along. Doc, maybe 40 years ago, when you were here, or maybe 50, when you were in elementary school, mm -hmm. maybe it was some old auntie in your neighborhood that taught you the English alphabet. Yes. Don't you think adding another layer of rigmarole and bureaucracy uh, to going into the teaching profession will only create further bottlenecks that will deepen the perceived corruption. Now you need a license and maybe someone wants to cut corners, you have to pay something. Now you want to secure your job because you've been teaching for the past five years, you are doing so with an HND. Someone would want you to pay money. Don't you think we are only adding another layer of bureaucracy rather than tackling the practical issues on the ground? I don't think so. Ten year, um, eight years ago, the year 2010, when I had my, my PhD, I was invited by Winneba uh, University uh, of Education to come in for an interview. 
because the government had declared that all those who had second degree, master's degree, could no more teach at the university level. They were giving them leave of absence, at least five years to go and upgrade themselves to have PhDs. So most of them left to go pursue it. If they don't have the passion and commitment, I don't think they will do that. So if that, should, uh, that, that answers your question, that, that, that is the answer I have. No, that's, that's at a very high level, at the basic school level. At the basic school <laughs> level. Um, because even with this licensure thing, if you don't take care, someone wants you to bring an envelope, someone wants you to do this. And in Ghana, when we say something is express, it means you are going to pay extra and all that. You see, that is the problem I have with Ghana. Everything that, even the, the, the registration process that I went through, I had to do certain things to get it. You see, in the developed world, it, is, it isn't so. So you had to grease the palms of some people, even though Absolutely. Your, your CV was watertight. Everything recommended by the minister, still I had to palm, uh, grease somebody's palm to get it. You see, and it is something that has to be eradicated from the system. If what the president is preaching can hold, because the corruption in this country is too much. To my, that, that's my opinion. Okay. Uh, you've had a little love affair with University of Education, Winneba. And of course, for you to have gone for an interview, you went to the campus. Yes. And that is one of the premier teacher training institutions we have in the country. Yes. How do you assess us on the level of facilities and monitoring? And do we meet the international standards you saw in the U.S., for example? For the facilities, I think it, they need a little upgrade. And for the monitoring, I, I, will, I will suggest during my recommendation that a team must be created because I, I, the last question is recommend, my recommendation, and I will reserve that for my recommendation. But for the money, uh, for the facilities, I think it's a little bit down in terms of facilities. So Ghana should do a better job of maybe upgrading the, fa uh, the facilities at the uh, education universities in the country. Um, Dr. Watson is a highly qualified educationist who will shortly roll uh, some of his um, credentials for you to see. And uh, this is, he's a charter member, International Anna Society in Education, Kappa Delta PI. It was founded about a century ago, 1911, uh, 1911, and this certifies that he has been initi initiated into Alpha Epsilon 9 chapter, Walden University, as a member of the society. This was given in 2010. Um, what is this? Sounds, sounds a bit Latin to me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, at every university, they have a grading level. And it ends to, it is up to 4.0. So if you are cumulative from first year to the final year, cumulative GPA, grade point average, amounts to between 3.7 to 4.0, you are considered a first class student. And they, they swear you into that society. Okay, okay. Um, I think there will be others. We would, uh, yeah, this one you. was for my PhD, and the other one was for the master's degree. Okay, you acquired this, the other one in yeah, 2010. For, yeah. And then this other one, the same friend, uh, you've been initiated. Maybe we can roll it up a bit. Yeah, that was down. two six. Yeah. This was in Delta um, Ap Absalon, Absalon, Chapter 116, and it's entitled 
to all rights and privileges of membership in Kappa Delta PI. Uh, Kappa Delta PI encourages high professional, intellectual, and personal standards and recognizes outstanding contributions to education. Uh, so this was for your second degree. This was for, for my uh, master's your degree. Your master's degree. Yes. Also in the United States. Also in the United States. Okay. So um, very high standards. Um, uh, of course, here we have like Professor Ade of Gimpa. Then we have uh, Professor Enestaite, uh, formerly of the University of Ghana, Vice Chancellor, former Vice Chancellor. People who have attained the very best mm -hmm. uh, of education in terms of training. Yes. Uh, so, how do we keep the standards and how do we raise the standards to the kind of level? And besides that, in Ghana, we say a grand form. It's not too much about how many papers you have. What has been your input? What is your contribution? As pertaining to Ghana? Yeah, yeah of, yes, of course. Okay, I've come to uh, establish a consulting firm so that I can advertise myself and start training those who have uh, private schools and they have teachers, especially the Montessori. My, my target is the Montessori. Because Montessori, I've gone to some schools and they, they just adopted the name. And if they really want to teach Montessori as, as they claim to be, then I would like to be the one to, to, to train them or, yeah, to train them as, as time goes on. Okay. You can keep your WhatsApp messages coming. 0558-656899. And in due course, we'll give you the opportunity when we open the phone lines uh, for you to call onto the show on this very line. Uh, is, it, is efficiency more about how high your qualification is or there are better other ways of getting great output with very modest qualification. Mm -hmm. uh, so, <laughs> I'll ask you this one too, mm -hmm. um, Doc. You want to tackle Montessori schools. Yes. And of course, you want to do that before, at the level of pre tertiary that is before the universities, including basic schools, mm -hmm. which we are discussing currently. That's right. And last time, I gave you a little assignment. Uh, how do you assess basic schools in Ghana currently? Most of the basic schools that are visited are private schools. Some are at the level that I, I expected, some don't meet my expectation. So my, my, my thing is, I recommend that those who are starting should re really take a look at those who are already up there and see how they can improve what their standards are to meet the standard already out there. So, um, of course, when you're looking at standards, you look at various indices, including the composure mm -hmm. and body language of teachers or facilitators. Right. What was your finding? What were your findings in that See, regard? Commitment in terms of teacher, you know, uh, or I, facilitator, I went to three facilitators. Schools. I went, I'm not cutting you off. I went to three schools. And I had to, they had to interview me, book appointment, and then they took me on a tour. So that didn't let me see much of what I wanted to see. If I had been given the chance to go in unannounced, to, to sit in the classroom to observe, I could have made my genuine assessment. But the schools that I went to, I went to the, to the reception, they called the proprietor, and they, book, they, they booked an appointment with me. So I believe the teachers, they took me to their classrooms were the best they had, and they composed themselves very well, so they met my standard. So I don't have any problem with that. Uh, so you were literally chaperoned. 
uh, made to see what they wanted you to see. To see, that's right. Uh, is that how monitoring is done like, uh, around the world? No, or there are better ways of throwing in people? Monitoring, monitoring in general, some are not notified and some are unannounced. And the unannounced actually yield the results that are needed. Because if you, if you go to a classroom, pop into a classroom where the students are so stiff, not relaxed, they seem to have some fears in them, that means the teacher is very harsh on them. So the teacher must be talked to or must be trained to be relaxed and welcome the students, let the students get to him or her freely as and when they want. That is how the children learn. If the children are as afraid of the teacher, how would they learn from the teacher? So my point is, if I was given the chance to visit the schools unannounced, I think I could have given my, my, my best judgment and maybe recommended to the proprietors, but the schools that I went to, they interviewed me and then they gave me an appointment and they took me around. Okay, okay. And we'll go for a quick commercial break. When we come back, you can call us on 055-865-6899. Do stick and stay with us. We'll be back shortly. <laughs> How any the Dutch and see and I bring be our sorry creation and water. I want to know so and my procope and Kukushia see and what how be brave and a woman. When see and I can tank at TV, I should make you for cry at today's day just on some. Well, just on some you may dear son, you have a bad near the four near with some woman, one more how any one more money, one more air for moon. Now, and pot say a dobby tie a tra. I would they pray as a share one Dutch and I want to. I know this shall be about Ama and to be. I will can tank at TV near for a just on some and from road. Abodi emuno, we dem say onyango pon ewo aduma ode do mama ibia. Sa achedi e niyama e bua mani panya onto ewo ni dada sitem. Ensio, enfema, yadiane, yenia, kwaye, enhama, eni nua hodo, empo ya mamre, eni ya maniye. Sa niyama e niyama onyango pon ode do mama ibia. Sa di emba emu ni pano enya ahoto. Enti na kanta ka television na shishe juma diye sun kwa ya tuni di se ye diem. Ewo ye diem juma diye suno. Na ye koga na miya ni na ni akwa kofa ni ama hodo ni aku pon ye diadu miye. Eni mfaswa ye ni ano waso. Sansu ni abehe aho bamba sun kwa di bamba sa ni ame. Ye timi ya hasi ye adi ya jaho adi ama intima. Se meka ye diem a nwa jisu se pa 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 ye diem pa pa pa. Medinga na ya ye diem. Ya ye diem. Ye diem. Uh, you welcome back. And the number to reach us on, via, in case you have any WhatsApp message, if you have any question uh, for Doc or any contributions to make, uh, is 0558-656899. And that keeps popping up rolling uh, on your screens. And when we come back after showing you a little feature about the experiences of another teacher, a teacher, uh, you can then call us on the same line uh, to interact with our guest, uh, Dr. Jerry Kotsin Senior. And the number is 0558-656-899. Let's go have a look at this little feature. We'll be back shortly. 
the impact of teacher training on the performance of teachers is very low in Ghana. This is because the curriculum for the teacher training colleges does not contain much practical concepts of teaching. Teaching is all about practicality and effective demonstration to prove a concept. Therefore, if the teacher goes for training and throughout the training section, he or she is not taught how to present a lesson practically for the learners to assimilate. Of course, that teacher won't perform any better. That is one. Two, the intake of the applicants into the teacher training colleges should also be looked at again. We should give a clear cut cutoff point for the applicants. Mostly, we do admit applicants with low grades, C6, C5, C4, to be trained as teachers. And we rather send those with better grades like A and B to the medical school. Even though there are other people who also come with or go to the colleges with better grades A and B, yet what I mean is we should have a cutoff point for teacher training applicants if it should range from A to B3 so that we have brilliant trained teachers. There are some teachers, they only apply to be trained as teachers because after training they have secured jobs. Meanwhile, they don't have any interest in the teaching fraternity. But because of the inavailability of job, they want to be trained as teachers. And when they come out or they pass out as teachers, they don't put up any better performance. Therefore, we should make sure the kind of applicants we admit as teacher trainees or potential teacher trainees should always be up to the mark to teach certain subjects and we shouldn't force the trainees to learn all subjects even when they can't teach some of them. We should allow them to specialize in certain areas that they can handle better. Um, you're welcome back. Uh, very germane concerns being raised by a teacher. You may now join the conversation by calling us on 0558 uh, 0558-656899. The number will shortly uh, scroll on your screens. Uh, Doc, very interesting concerns that well people are going into this thing not because they like it but because when yeah, i attend the teacher training i'm secure the job how can we change that perception there is a caller hello your name and where you calling us from hello caller hello good morning sir good, good morning and thanks for making time your name and where you calling us from I'm Iman O'Collin from Spintex. Iman from Spintex. Thanks for making yes, time. And yeah. thank you so much for your program too. I'm really enjoying it. And um, uh, I'd like to contribute to the program. Please do. Okay. So um, I would like Prof uh, to, I would like this uh, idea on the double, double track system. Okay. Of the senior high school. Yes, sir. Yes, I would like uh, to hear what he thought for Ghanaians on the double track system because I'm not really impressed okay. at all with the double track system. I think our education system is dwindling right now. Okay. Uh, Emmanuel, Doc will tackle your concern. Uh, thanks a great deal, Ima from Spintex. Uh, you can also join the conversation by calling us on 0558 656899. Uh, Doc. Even though I asked you a question, I don't know whether you can tackle this concern from my viewer. What is your candid opinion on the double track system? I am, let me tell you the truth. I'm new to the double track system. The first time I heard of this double track system was when I met with Dr. Tando in his office. 
at the Ministry of Education. And he told me a certain group will attend HS, uh, the SHS. Sorry, so, let me, let's lump that. I'll take a few calls so that we can tackle. Hello, your name and where are you calling us from? Yes, uh, I'm Dennis. I'm calling from Tema. Dennis from Tema. Thanks for making time, Dennis. Yes, sir. Okay. Hello? Yeah, please do, Dennis. We can hear you. Yes, sir, please. I just want to say you're doing a great work, and I like the way you are. Keep it up. Okay, thank you so much, Dennis. Thank yeah. you. Welcome. Oh, thank you so much, Dennis. Thank you. <laughs> As I keep saying, there's a very solid team that is behind the production of the show. Uh -huh. So you've not had time to really look at what the double tracks. Yes, and uh, when he told me, he said a, a batch of students will, will be trained for three months. Then they will take a back seat for the second batch to go. In fact, I'm not actually conversant with what he's, he's trying to say, but I'm here to watch. And I don't know how this will end because I'm not used to that. And even based on your experience, okay. Hello, your name and where are you calling us from? Uh, my name is De my name is Derek. I'm calling from who? You calling from where? Who? Who? Oh, calling us from who? Welcome to the show. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think uh, my wife is a teacher. Okay. And then uh, this topic, yeah, this topic we are discussing, she, the, uh, the, the, we call something a teaching learning material. Teaching learning materials. Learning materials yeah. Okay. She teaches in a, a government school, that's uh, basic. Okay. And uh, I'm so concerned about her profession, and I've been asking her questions about her profession. She said that for some time now, they didn't give them uh, the teaching language in the textbooks. And even the textbooks that are there are the old, they are very old. So it means that nothing new is being taught. And they are still sticking with the old ones. So there's nothing new they are teaching the children. So she, even as a teacher, her, her capacity and her quality is even dwindling day by day because. She's, there's nothing new to be trained, or there's no capacity building for them as a teacher to even, you know, kind of uh, renew what they, they know already from school. Okay. So it is, it is largely affecting both the teacher and the student as a whole. Uh -huh. And okay. that's what I want to contribute to. Okay, the thank you so much, our caller from Ho. Thanks a great deal. Uh, Abna Safo will join us pretty shortly. But then, Doc. Even though you've shared your views on double track, you, you hear what people are saying. Yes. Ghana is all about, we are doing this, we are adding this layer. Textbooks, that should be used at the basic level. People are not being supplied. Schools are not being supplied. So why don't we major in the majors and minor in the minors rather than majoring in the minors? Okay, I have an answer to that. During my, my meeting with Dr. Tando, this thing came up. Let, let's make this caller a last caller. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah, this is David calling from Sweetex. I want to make a contribution. Uh, your name okay. again, bro? I'm David calling from Sweetex. David. Okay, Dave, David. thanks for making time. Yeah. Yeah, please feel free, David. Yeah, this is David calling from Sweetex. Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Yes, you, you are making a very good discussion in connection with our educational system. Yes. Uh, what I want to say is that you realize that there was an educational reform in 1987. The, one, of the, one of the main reasons of the reform was that our whole system was full of theory. So therefore, the new reform came in to cut away the theoretical aspect of our the question I want to ask is that will he say after the reform, as the educational system is better than the old system? Okay. That's my question. Okay, thank you so much, David from Spintex. Yes, uh, I, I, I can I can answer that. Please do. According to the according to Dr. Tando, 
the, the one of the teams is taxed with providing the, the, the needed textbooks, giving them the, the training that they need to upgrade themselves, and then the universities to they will have to restructure the courses that they train, they, they, they do teach the teachers to graduate from. So, Dr. T according to Dr. Tando, they, they have uh, 10 teams, they have assembled 10 teams that are tackling this problem. So I believe before the, 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 uh, the whole new system takes off, the textbooks will be addressed, the, the, the training will be addressed, and all their concerns will be addressed. Okay. And we now invite Abina Safo to read some of your messages that came via WhatsApp. Then we come back to you, Doc, and give us some of your recommendations. Abina, welcome. Thank you. Okay. What do you have for us by way of messages? Okay, we've received some lengthy, quite lengthy um, text messages today. And I go straight to the, the first one. Good morning. This is a very important program. May God bless you all. I miss... I am a graduate of the University of Ghana, where I majored in banking and finance. All my life, I love teaching and sharing knowledge that I require, and through that, I widen my, my scope of knowledge. I, I applied for NAPCO. I was not successful and also sat for the GES recruitment exam and was not successful for what reason, I don't know. I think teaching is supposed to be for those who love it and not otherwise. I feel like I could contribute greatly to the education of our future generations, but the system is just not the best due to several reasons. Can I, can I? No name. Can I, can I uh, say something? Please, 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 sure. please do. Okay. In the U.S., we have a, a system called alternate route system. Those who did not major in education, those who did sciences, those who did even medicine. Dr. Montessori, he did medicine. But he, uh, after searching within herself, she felt that that wasn't her calling. And that is why she went back, dug into herself, and came up with the Montessori curriculum. And it is what it is today, OK? So those who did other courses in universities, I would recommend to Dr. Tando that they be given the alternate route, which is available in New Jersey. And if they want funds, I can solicit funds from, from New Jersey. So that it, it could be, a philanthropist died and gave his money for teachers around the world to be trained. Those who chose different courses and have decided to come back to teaching, to be trained through the, the alternate courses. They, they are al always graduate courses, about 15 to, to 20 credit courses that, that can, they can take and then become professional teachers. OK. OK, Abina. Yeah. And then um, the next one says, talking about education in basic schools, I think we should introduce regular quizzes which comes with prizes in the various districts and eventually nationwide. This will help boost the morale of the people to learn harder. This should be part of the assemblyman's responsibility. Raphael sent in this one. And okay. okay, you can go to the next one. something to say. No, you can go to the next one. Okay, message. and then Salamu. Mr. Ibrahim, I know the government of the day is trying his possible best to better our to better our teaching field, ask your guest, is it proper to publish the results of teachers' licensial exam? I, I suggest a teacher should be taught one particular area where he or she can master, can master well by so doing, impact it into the students. Fatawu yeah. from Medina sent in this one. Yeah, can I, can I say something to that? Please do. Yes. I, so I told Dr. Tando, he, thank God he's, he's also U.S. trained. And he also knows that teachers in the U.S. don't just uh, teach general subjects. They have concentrations. If you're, you're, you're majored in chemistry, they, they train you 
and test you on, chem uh, on chemistry so that you can teach chemistry only. If you majored in math, mathematics, then they train you and, and major and licensed in math. You do, they, don't, they don't want teachers to be, to, to be teaching general courses. No. They want teachers to master the, the courses that they teach. So according to Dr. Tando, that will be implemented as well. Okay, Abna, sadly, this is all time will permit us. Okay. I'm sure there will be another opportunity to have you, Doc, so that you share recommendations and others. Right. Uh, keep watching uh, Kantanka TV and have a good day. Thank you very much, sir. Welcome.